Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. So, so far we have been looking at uh, you know CDF of discrete random variables, how to plot them, how to go between PMF and CDF and how to compute probabilities of intervals of random uh, the intervals within which random variables can fall using the CDF and all that. So, those are important skills to pick up. Now, let us start moving on you know to larger and larger alphabets. To me a picture like this sort of nicely conveys uh, where, uh, where we are heading. Okay, so, this is uh, the plot of CDF of binomial random variable n comma 0.6 okay. and I am increasing n, but I am keeping the scale of the picture the same. Okay. So, notice why I am doing that, you, you, may, you may think about why am I keeping the scale the same, so only then the picture will come out like this. Okay. So, if you keep increasing the scale, you, you will not see this and, and continuous is always like that, right? you have to keep the scale same and, on, and only then you will see the continuous line as opposed to you know, discrete line, anyway, think about that. So, here is uh, n equals 10, n equals 20, n equals 50, n equals 100 and on the same scale, notice how the CDFs start looking like a continuous line. I mean, this is actually the CDF, I am actually drawing those steps, right. See, remember when n is 10, uh, x takes values 0 to 10, at every point it jumps, you know, at 0 it jumps by a very small number, why is it very small? Because the probability that x takes value 0 is point you know 4 raised to the power 10 which is like very very small. So, you see a very tiny jump there and slowly as it comes close to 5 and 6 you start seeing the big jumps okay and then as it goes closer to 10 again you see very tiny jumps, but at least you can see the jumps when n is 10 you can see the jumps you can see that there are the flat segments and the line segments. Now, even when I move to n equals 20 you are already seeing that the intervals are shrinking right the flat intervals are shrinking, they are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller because I have kept the scale the same, I am sort of viewing uh, this whole thing in the same scale, okay. When I go to n equals 50, already you are seeing, you know, when everything has become very tiny, this uh, the flat parts where it is staying the same, the step length sort of has become very tiny, but you see the jump around 50, 60, there is a jump, okay. The jump you can notice only there and everything is bunching up down below and there is some significant jump around 50, 60. So, it gives you a nice picture of how the binomial uh, behaves and looks. When you go to n equals 100, you can see really, you know, I mean, this is, this is, uh, most people will say, this is almost like a continuous curve, isn't it, okay. Most people will sort of draw this and there is a much simpler description for it than thinking of it as discrete and thinking 100 point PMF, etc. Just draw a line, that line is, seems fine enough, right. For most practical purposes for calculations it should be good enough. Remember from a CDF what am I calculating when I want to find probability of an interval, I am just subtracting the value of the CDF at two points, right. Supposing I want to do calculation of probability that x lies between 50 and I do not know what this point is, maybe it is some 50, 60, 70 or whatever, 60, right. So, all I need is the difference of these two prob probabilities of the CDF. So, this is probability that x takes values between 50 and 60, is not it. So, I do not need to really find, I mean I do not need to precisely know every value here, it is enough if I have the continuous approximation, right. So, you see the difference, difference of the two points, even if I draw a continuous line and have some simple description for the continuous line, the difference is good enough, okay. So, this kind of a picture, uh, in my mind at least, it sort of conveys how the CDF is much more interesting and comes out in a very natural, nice way and makes the, you know, the shifts the focus from individual values to intervals and, uh, you know, all these small, 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 small steps to maybe a continuous function or a plot connecting all of these things together and moving towards the continuous uh, world. So, this is sort of, I mean, makes it maybe easy to picture how, you know, the continuous uh, random variables uh, are defined and they enter the picture, okay. So, this is uh, for the binomial. Uh, you can also do a similar plot for the meteorite data, you can convert this histogram into a PMF type thing and then draw the meteorite data and here again you see right from minus 5 to 25, look at this nice smooth shape. This is actually a discrete uh, PMF converted into a CDF, I am doing small, 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 small steps, but since the steps have become so small, they, they just look like one continuous nice line, okay. How much easier is it to just describe a continuous line as opposed to all these small, 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 small values in the bins, okay. And as far as computing probabilities of intervals is concerned, the continuous line is good enough, it is going to be good enough, right. So, any, any range you want to calculate, the difference in the probabilities should be okay, right. So, you see this is uh, very interesting when you, when you look at the picture of the CDF and uh, see literally how the continuous 
uh, model becomes much more interesting the large alphabet case than the discrete model that we have had so far. Okay? So, this leads us to the definition of a cumulative distribution function. Okay? So, so far we have taken a random variable x and defined the CDF for that random variable x. Okay? So, now I am going to forget about random variables, there is no random variables, right? let us let's forget about any random variable at all, okay? there is no random variable, okay? I do not care. I am only going to care about a function. Okay? This is a function that goes from the real line to 0, 1. Okay? Once again, I want to repeat, there is no random variable associated with it. You, I got rid of the uh, of this x. I think this x should also go. Okay? This x should not be there. There is no reference to a random variable x. It is just a function. Okay? I am going to define cumulative distribution functions without reference to random variables, okay? but keeping all the properties that I want for distribution functions. Okay? So, a function f from the real line to 0, 1, I will call it a cumulative distribution function or a distribution function if it satisfies the following four properties. Okay? So, f needs to be a non-decreasing function taking values between 0 and 1, okay? that is ok. At minus infinity, it should start at 0. At plus infinity, it should sort of saturate at 1. Okay, so, that is how the picture should be and there is this technical requirement here, I will not go into too, de too much detail, it needs to be continuous from the right, from the right uh, it has to sort of close itself and stop. Okay, so, I, let me not go into detail here, but the first three points are very important and uh, that is how our cumulative distribution functions are defined. They have to be non-decreasing, start at 0, end at 1 and sort of jump, maybe they can jump, maybe they can you know do whatever else they want in the middle, right. I'm, now, I am not talking about <coughs> discrete random variables or anything. I am just talking about any function, right. Starts at 0, ends at 1, it can do whatever it wants in the middle. I am calling, but as it should be non-decreasing, that is all, okay. As long as it is non-decreasing, I am going to call it a cumulative distribution function, okay. So, these functions, you can see they mirror the properties of the CDF of a random variable, okay. So, if you had a random variable and define the CDF uh, as, as probability that x is less than or equal to small x, then you will get definitely a proper valid CDF, okay? but there can be other functions which satisfy this. Okay? So, so far we have only had discrete random variables. So, when we take a discrete random variable and compute its CDF, we thought, we saw it that it had a very simple structure, it had the step, stepwise structure. Okay? Now, for my arbitrary CDF here, an arbitrary cumulative distribution function, I do not need the stepwise structure. It can be smooth and continuous also. Okay? So, this is sort of the theoretical jump that we are going to make. Okay, we defined CDFs, we looked at discrete random variables and say, saw that the CDF has a certain jump, jump, jump structure. But when we go to large alphabets, it looked like that jump, jump, jump structure was sort of coming down to a continuous line. So, maybe in theory, we want to throw away the discrete random variable. We want to define a distribution function, which has all the properties of the distribution function that we want. It starts at 0, ends at 1 and it is non-decreasing and slowly gets to 1. What can we do with this discrete uh, distribution function? We will see soon enough. But this is the important and crucial jump. Okay, so we forget about the stepwise structure. We start get, forget about all that jumps, etc. Distribution function can be anything as long as it starts at zero, it ends at one. It's non-decreasing. Right? There is that technical condition of being continuous from the right. As long as it's like that, we are good. Okay, so let's see some examples, right? Shall we? Let's look at some examples. So here are three, four, I mean four different examples of valid cumulative distribution functions. So, you can of course have any CDF of a discrete random variable and that would be a valid CDF, right? So, that is how the whole definition came about. So, but, but you can see all the properties are satisfied. It starts at 0, ends at 1. If you look at the first plot, for instance, uh, the top left plot here, it starts at 0, that is a tick mark, it ends at 1, it is just a tick mark, it is sort of uh, non-decreasing. Yes, that is also a tick mark, so it is a valid CDF. So, it starts at 0, ends at 1 and it is non-decreasing. Okay? So, both of these you can sort of see they come from the discrete world and here is a continuous uh, CDF. Okay? So, it starts at 0, that is a tick mark, it ends at 1, that is a tick mark and you can see it is non-decreasing. But there are no steps. I do not have the step, 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 step phenomenon. Okay? 
it is a valid CDF, it is a cumulative distribution function. Okay. So, here is another function again starts at 0 ends at 1, it is non-decreasing that is also true. No steps, but it is a valid continuous CDF. Okay. So, we are generalizing the distribution function to an arbitrary shape, it can take any shape it wants, it can be continuous, it need not jump but it has to go from 0 to 1, it has to be non-decreasing, that is it. As long as you satisfy that, you have a valid cumulative distribution function. So, this is an important step in theory when we jump from the discrete world to the continuous world. Okay? When we want to move towards continuous random variables, we have to have a distribution function which is continuous. Okay? It does not have jumps, it just goes from 0 to 1 non-decreasing. Okay? And you can see the connection here and it seems like you know this continuous, uh, the, the one on the left bottom here sort of mirrors the discrete uh, picture very closely, right? You have you, you the discrete jump, 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 but you know this guy, this continuous guy is very, very similar, is not it? These two are similar. Likewise here if you, if you drew a picture like this and then you see these two, so these two are very, very similar. While the top picture needs all these jumps to be specified, the bottom picture is just a line. Okay? How easy it is to specify a line? Okay? How easy it is to do a calculation with a line? Okay? Similarly, on the right side also, the top picture is so many, so many tiny, tiny jumps. The bottom picture is just one continuous curve. You can describe that continuous curve in so many interesting different ways. Okay? So, notice how the calculations with probabilities of intervals can become much, much simpler if you have a continuous model. So, the theory that needs to develop here is how do we think of these distribution functions, what, 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 how do we work with them, etc. Okay, all of that will come in the theory, but hopefully you see the connection between the probability and the modeling in real life that you might have to do with continuous random variables and how easy it is to work with them in practice, much, much more easier than discrete sometimes and sometimes and when you have to do it, you can use this picture. Okay. So, let us come back to this problem of using continuous CDF and doing calculation for uh, uniform discrete uh, distributions. We saw this example before when x is uh, uniform between 1 and 100, we saw the small, 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 small steps are going to be there, you have this complicated looking you know CDF. Okay? One can try and approximate it, so if, so if you want a picture here, so if you want a CDF picture here, so this one is going to be something like you know it starts at 1, so 0, it is going to go, 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 reach you know 1 at 100, okay, so it is just a picture here, this is uh, this guy. Now uh, if I do a change of color, maybe blue, okay, so this guy is simply going to be a straight line like this, right this guy is this. Okay? So, you see here how this, this discrete uh, CDF for this uniform distribution between 1 to 100 and this continuous CDF that I had where I just had x by 100, a simple x by 100 uh, that I am doing here is, is a nice uh, approximation. They are very close, is not it? I mean, depending on the scale you look at, they are really, really uh, close here. Okay? So, now let us see if we can do our wonderful calculation of interval probabilities with both these cases, right? So, I am going to ask the same question. Remember, I did interval calculations with CDF, probability of x between 3 and 10. If I use the exact CDF, I am going to get 7 by 100. If I use the approximate CDF here with just the continuous CDF f of, f of 10 minus f of 3, I get the same value. But notice what goes wrong here. If you, if you go to 3.2 and 10.6, right, my exact CDF will give me the same exact 7 by 100. But notice what happens to my continuous CDF. My continuous CDF does not make all those kind of uh, you know nuances between 3.2 and 10.6, it will simply do you know 10.6 by 100 minus 3.2 by 100, it will give you 7.4 by 100. So, it does not quite match, there is a small difference, but some people will say you know the ease with which I can work with x by 100 is so much better, so I will take it any day. It is I know there is going to be errors, but you know there are errors all over the place, so maybe this is not too big and maybe instead of 100 if I were to you know maybe even zoom it down a little bit more maybe I will get better answers, who knows, right? So, the same thing carries over with x less than or equal to 17 by 0.3. If you do that exact calculation of the exact CDF, you will get 17 by 100. If you just do it with the approximation, you will get 17.3 by 100. Okay, good enough, right? 
So, this is the sort of interesting comparison you can do with discrete world and you know if you do a continuous model for the same thing you know what you lose what you gain hopefully you can see that in this picture ok. So, let us take a uh, ok yeah. So, clearly the calculation is simpler, but maybe in the uniform distribution you do not need it right. It is easy enough calculation even with the exact uh, PMF let us go to binomial ok. So, let me show you a simple approximation this is actually a very simple approximation for this binomial uh, CDF there are more fancy approximations, but let us start with a very simple approximation here. So, this is a binomial distribution uh, n equals 100 p equals 0 0.6 if you have to do the CDF the CDF sort of jumps whenever k is uh, let me go back to my black ink. So, this is when k is uh, you know 0 1 till 100 in the other places it stays flat right. So, that is how the CDF works. Now, this guy is a it is a nice function I would urge you to plot it this is you know 1 by 1 plus e x p of minus x right. So, of course, this is x minus 60 by square root 24 and do not ask me why that all these things come from these are all uh, we will we'll look at this later on, but these are uh, this is, these are interesting numbers these are related to. So, for those of you who are keen on it this guy is n p ok this 24 is n p into 1 minus p. So, you might wonder where this comes from. So, that 60 is the mean, this is the variance, etc. So, so, but look at look at this function, right? So, this function is so much simpler than the CDF, right? So, here you have 100 choose 50, you know, here you do not have any such thing, it is just exp, you just plug it into a calculator, you will get the answer, ok. So, it turns out this, this is this is a reasonably good approximation for this, it is not very bad approximation. So, how do you test this approximation? You calculate probabilities of intervals. You calculate probability of interval using the exact CDF, you are going to get. Uh, you know 0 0.0271, 0 0.51, 0 0.44, 0 0.01 look at the answers here with this very simple approximation function and you get fairly close answers. You, you do lose something you know there is the symmetry that comes here on this side which does not come here etc. But you know it is ok you, you do not lose uh, too much and in fact better approximations are possible even for this 100.6 you can do much better approximations than this one. So, this continuous CDF seems to be a valuable tool in our hands you know instead of modeling some discrete ra random variable particularly when it takes a lot of values using very many PM I mean, discrete values of PMF and complicated CDFs and doing major summations and all that here you have a simple formula and it gives you approximate values right. So, you get a sense of where the, where the value lies and it seems very very interesting. So, this is the power of uh, the continuous approximation ok. So, when you do binomials particularly uniform you might say ok uniform is easy enough why should I need anything more fancy look at this for binomial ok. So, this is really really powerful and like I said this is a very simple approximation I picked one very simple one just to show you one can complicate this you know even very relatively good looking expressions you know maybe a little bit longer and slightly more ugly than this you can get very good approximations for the binomial ok. So, that hopefully is another way to convince you that this all the effort we are going to put into learning about continuous distributions continuous distribution functions continuous CDFs is worth it uh, and when you really model uh, you get much simpler models in the continuous world ok. So, that is the end of uh, this little lecture which showed you the connections between you know how to approximate in large cases how to approximate a CDF with uh, continuous and how to do calculations etc. Uh, from now on we will move on and start studying the general theory ok. So, what is the notion of a general random variable what is in general a random variable what does we already saw discrete random variables which took discrete set of values and what are continuous random variables we will see all that in the next lecture. Thank you very much.